Right, we're going to be live now. Yeah, we're live now. Wait, wait till a few people come on. Hi, everyone who's watching, um, who's not watching live. I hope you're all well. So I've got Ben from the Inquirer with me. I've um, got 10 people on now. Uh, yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, ben from the Inquirer is on. So we're going to have a chat today about quite a few things. Um, thank you for the birthday messages as well. Really appreciate that. How are you doing, Ben? I'm good, mate. Yeah, yourself? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, just uh, obviously doing this four-day fast. Um, I'm, this is the fourth day. So I could I could finish it at midnight tonight, but I'm contemplating carrying through. Yeah, I was saying um, just before we went on, he looks like he's just the night before a weigh-in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big thing. I've lost. Yeah. I've actually lost a stone in. Um, what was it now? Yeah, four. Yeah, be four days. I've, I've lost over a stone. I lost eight pounds in one day. You see it in your face as well. You're looking fresh. You know, it's sort of. Thank you, mate. Do you know the other thing as well? I've only been getting four hours sleep a night. I've been I've been wake going to bed at one because I'm still all sort of hyper, yeah. and I'm waking up at five and I can't get back to sleep. So I've been getting four hours sleep a night, but I'm I'm feeling energized. It's like I've, it's like I'm totally rejuvenated. It's it's amazing. I recommend fasting to anyone, but obviously uh, go and see your doctor first if you're going to do it because you might have underlying health problems. But um, <laughs> I'll see how I feel. To, I'll see how I feel tonight, and if I do break it at midnight tonight. I'll have um, bone broth, one egg, and half an avocado. That's it. That's what I'll eat for the next day or two. And then I'll gradually go back onto a bit of chicken, fish, bit of veg. And I'm not going to go back to the junk and all that. I'm not going to do it. If I've gone this far to, to put myself out for four days, I'm going to stick to a healthy diet now. Because I do feel really good. Good stuff. Um, I'm going to answer, just do, if anyone wants any questions as well for, for myself or Ben, let me know in the chat. I'm just going to give a few shout outs, Ben, and I'll get back to you straight away. Yeah, yeah? No, no worries, mate. But any, any questions for me or Ben, we're going to talk about Tyson Fury in a minute, um, some of the true crime. Just shout out a few people. Thank you, Tracy. Um, happy birthday, Matt. Thank you, Ainsley. Mank man, hope you're well. I saw your video, Ben, by the way, earlier with the um, the twins, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I saw it and uh, I was reading that Norman Parker's book and I, I can't remember seeing it before, so I thought it'd be an interesting one. Parker's Tales? Yeah, Parker's Tales, that's the one. Yeah, he came to watch my fight, one of my fights at Bethnal Green. But just on that, a few people said they don't think the Crays were together in prison, etc. No, they were. Yeah, because I double checked it. I looked at the news reports. I looked at the timelines, and yeah, there, was, there, there was also a news report on that attack. Because they both I think they held out. they held him down, and it was a sauce bottle thing, wasn't it? Yeah, and they got put down the block after. Yeah, but Norman Parker, yeah, he was a sound, sound bloke. He came to my fight. I actually lost that fight as well. I was gutted. <laughs> it was one of the ones I lost. But um, thank you, Gemma. Thanks, Gemma. Anthony. Hello. Yeah, nice one. Nice one, mate. Tommy Rice, thank you, mate. Box Lever Nash, thank you. Jay, thank you very much, mate. Mr. Inquirer, best wishes to both of you. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so Ben, you've got um you've got your other channel as well, haven't you? You've got the media one. Yeah, so what it is, because it's a bit confusing for people, I've got the Inquirer 2.0, which is called yeah. the two it's called 2.0 because as you know, my I and my subs. I had one prior to that, which got um, took down. I had one that there was a, a mess up with it, and I started it again. Yeah. Then there, then there was, so yeah, the Inquirer Media one. I've set that up because I've got a media company which I do blogs and and um, different things what we've got in the pipeline. And I was going to do podcasts on that one. Are you, you're but, still going to do that, aren't you? Yeah, but I just haven't got the. T I haven't had the time, so I'm just still trying to figure out what I'm doing with that. So it's just sort of yeah. sitting there at the minute. So that's pretty the pipeline, yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, talking about that tomorrow, tomorrow evening, everyone, I've got Michael Francis on. You'll be on there, Ben, won't you? You'll be coming 100%, 100%, on. Hundred percent, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mark, <laughs> yeah. That was a surprise phone call I got yesterday. I, I got a phone call saying, um, "Would you want to do a, an interview with Michael Francis?" I was like, "I'd love to. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd love to." And um, and that's it. We've arranged it for tomorrow. 
That's a, I'm really happy with that. That's a really good one. That's a big one, that is, you know. I've been that's a big one, mate. And I'm really... I'm going to ask him about um, Joey Molino and, and the other, <laughs> other <laughs> and the other YouTubers. You know, Mikey Scars. I'm going to ask him what he thinks of, of them. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, mate. I've met him before, haven't I? A couple of years back. So we got a well. He's a good bloke. So I've got to say though, I'd love to do what uh, me and you do one with Joey Molino. Yeah, yeah. Well, love- yeah, that, I'd love that. I'd, I'd love to do that. Hi, Joe Molino. Joe Molino's got a good channel, hasn't he? He has got a good channel. Anyone that hasn't seen Joe Molino, have a look. He's he's at, apparently still the acting boss of the Philadelphia family, isn't he? He's proper, though. It's a bit like I was saying the other day. You don't get grasses... Real, you don't really get grasses... And uh, You get lots of grasses on YouTube, but you don't get, like, um, super grasses. So, for yeah. instance, you don't see, like, the geezer who grass the Essex boys up on YouTube... Whereas, yeah. in America, whereas in America, you've got all these super grasses who've got shells. Yeah. yeah. But Joe Molino, and I would say Fran, I would say um, Michael Francis as well. I don't think yeah. he's a grass. I think they're the two of the only ones. I don't either because he never took he never took Michael Francis, even though he had a contract on him from his own father. He didn't go into protection. He didn't get any protection from the government. Um, no. No and apparently, that. according to him, nobody ever went to prison because of him. But I know he mentions that one fella, not um, Nobby of Summit Nobby. But anyway, I know he mentions him, but no one went like Sammy the Bull put a lot of people away. Loads, yeah, and in the ground as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 19, 19 people, wouldn't it? That he, but um, Sammy the Bull would be good to do with as well, wouldn't he? Yeah, I, that would be a good one as well. <laughs> um. Yeah, what do you think of um, the upcoming fight then, mate? I'm going to talk to you about Tyson Fury um, coming up. Um, when mate, is it? It's coming up in May, isn't it, I think. Um, mm. is, it May, is it May 13th? Someone will tell us in the chat. Um, yeah. I, it's it's a difficult one for me because I was a big Tyson Fury fan. Yeah. Um, I put some pictures up, I think, in my last video. Uh, not Not the last one, the one before, at the end. Yeah, put a picture up of me. Oh and, yeah, um, yeah. Me and um, I can't remember his name now. He's a boxer. who's out there. He ended up having a drink with us. But we went yeah. to. I went to see Fury in Germany, Dusseldorf, the one that got cancelled, and the the one after. I went to Vegas for the second fight, which was just a brilliant night. Did you go uh, to that? Yeah, I went <laughs> there. Me and the lads went there for a long weekend. <laughs> I'll say no more about that. Um, <laughs> but um, it's brilliant. And I love Fury, and I still do as a boxer, but I just, I've gone off him big time. Yeah. I mean, what what made you, what put you you off him? He just, it got to the point where you can't ignore, he's just lying constantly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm giving money, I'm giving all the money to charity. It's not about money. And then he's, now he's saying, yeah, it's all about the money. Um, Yeah. And I think Joshua has been, even though I never really liked Joshua, I think he's more being himself now and he's more humble sort of thing. Yeah. I think Joshua has got the upper hand over Fury now. I never used to, but I think Joshua yeah. would beat Fury now. Go, judging on their both their last performances, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think with Fury, he's a difficult one because if you look at his... If he doesn't train proper, he can look terrible. Like Fury, yeah. He can look really bad. I mean, that sec- uh, sorry, the third fight against Wilder, I didn't think he was going to get up off the floor at one point. And we yeah. know that he... He hadn't been training properly because his kid had been ill in, in hospital. Yeah. And um, obviously, he didn't train well against Ongarnu. But if he's on point and he's looking mm. like he's, in a way, look like he's looking like he's fasted and he's sort of sharp. Yeah. He's, he's difficult to beat, isn't he? You know? He is. He's just tricky and awkward. And he's long and so he's so mobile and his boxing IQ is amazing. He's slipping and his movement and his feints and he's, he's hard work. He's really hard work, but um, but Joshua looks on fire at the moment, it and Joshua's happen. got the power. Joshua's definitely got the power advantage, hundred percent. You know that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I felt it. Yeah, I felt them both. Who? Oh, um, you, sparred, then, you sparred Fury, didn't you? I sparred Fury twice. Yeah, um, first time it was just me, him, and Shane in the gym, and I done um, four rounds. I landed about one punch, and the second time um, he jumped in the ring at the end of the session. I was Peter. I was with Peter Fury. 
That's when I met John. We were all in the caravan together. John Fury, me, Peter, <laughs> um, Tyson, everyone. Huey. So I sparred Huey. Then I sparred Eli Frankham. Then I sparred someone else because I was in prize fighter. So I was getting yeah. used to doing three rounds rest, three rounds rest. And then um, I, I'd done all that sparring. I was knackered. And then Tyson jumped in the ring just out of the blue. And I was like, oh, no. No. And um, it, it was funny because he just ran around me in circles throwing jabs out. And I was I could barely do anything. I could barely like set myself. It was amazing. Where was he at then at that point? Was he sort of um, British champ? British champ he? Yeah, he was British champ or moving past British champ. Who would you, in your prime, if you had a real good camp, you're in your prime, who would you give yourself the best shot at? <sighs> what, to, to beat in a fight? Like, to take him as far as possible? It's hard to say. I never really got to my prime, really, because I was so inactive and I had so much time off. Um, don't know. Going on the sparring, I, I, I had some good wars with Matt Skelton. Um, really good six-rounders when it was very close or sometimes I've come out thinking I got the, I landed the better ones. It's only, I know it's only sparring. Over 12, he would have destroyed me because I, I was only could do six or eight, but... Um, John McDermott I had a couple of good spars with. I hurt him in one of them. He hurt me in the next one. So they were sort of they were sort of European level. John was British European level. Um, who else I sparred? I sparred Huey Fury. Um, I sparred Eli Franklin. I sparred Wayne Lewin. Danny Williams. I sparred a few times. Mark Potter. Julius Francis. Um, you're going all the way back. To Derek Chisora. Got Derek Chisora yeah, was one of the easier. Yeah. I found I found That's Derek. Funny. Yeah. That's crazy though when you told me that because like Derek Watches or in that, but in sparring you said didn't he? He sort of bottled it, not bottled it, but he just gave up. Um, he didn't really want to know because I, I came in and put the pressure on him, and yeah. I was attacking him like as I do because we were both about the same level, eight or nine fights, professional, and he just won the ABAs, and I just put it on him because I knew he was an up and coming pro, and I knew he would try and do it to me, so I put it on him, and he just backed off four times. We sparred, and the fourth time. He fell, I got him on the floor in the first round and he and he said his hand was hurting and he got out of the ring and went home. <laughs> he, he, fought, he fought the same week. This was on the Monday. He fought on the Saturday and he knocked the geezer out with the right hand. I'll well, never forget funny. it. It's funny because I remember watching you. Obviously, I didn't know you at the time. I remember watching you um, fight Joshua and I said to my brother, I was watching it with my brother and um, I said, this will be the first time he's been tested because... Yeah. He'll come out aggressive. He'll because yeah. I always said Joshua is not. Yeah. He's not had anyone trying to put it on him. I yeah. said because I watched a few of your fights and I said he he will come at him. He'll put it on him. Yeah, and and you did, and you missed. Yeah, very. You it was close that over and right, wasn't it? It was a left hook. One was a was left it, hook. Oh, it was a left hook. Left so you hook. Came, yeah. You, you came, was it that you came in? And I'm just trying to remember it in my mind. Then you swung, but you missed him by a little. He sort of he pulled back and it just missed. That's it. He he, lent, he just lent out of the way, and he caught me there with an up, a few uppercuts and that, and yeah. um, and that I took them quite right, and I carried on, and I caught him again, and then it was another shot he got with after that went through my gloves, and I thought, flipping hell, even through the gloves, that's power, a yeah. different level of power. Um, but yeah, it, then he broke my eye socket, and that was painful, because normally with a boxing match it doesn't hurt, but that actually did hurt. Yeah. But, um, yeah, different level. I was talking to Ray Hill. Ray Hill messaged me this morning, funnily enough. Yeah. On um, He sent me a picture on um, what I've not spoke to him for, for a long, long, long is time. You, is he still moaning about my channel that I just read books? <laughs> 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 I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He did, didn't he? He, he? I think he sent you a message after that, didn't he? Yeah, I didn't mind, mate. It's just, it's, yeah. he's, he's all right. Um, he sent me a message about Lenny McLean. It's something about when he was going to fight him and Frank Warren was there. And then he was talking about Johnny Waldron. And when Johnny Waldron accidentally knocked Lenny out with that jab, yes, he was paid yeah. to lose. And Lenny came out and he threw a jab and knocked him out. And I said to Ray, well, I said, Lenny can't have had a good chin then, really, to get knocked out by a jab. And he went, no, nah, not really. But then he had that, such a reputation on the street. But it makes me wonder, like, how come he, he was so tough on the street if you can get go down from a jab in a boxing match? What, what was the, you know, Cliff Fields when he beat him? Was that? Yeah. Wasn't that a jab as well? Was it? Um, no, no. Actually, yeah, he gave Cliff quite a good fight. It, it was two fights, and one of them, Bill Bill Cooper was there. My mate was the corner man. He said one of them, um, 
Lenny really stinged into Cliff. Cliff was having yeah. to block him and and he took a few and and he, he, they nutted, he nutted Cliff. So yeah. Cliff kicked him, kicked him in the bollocks and pushed him back. It was a proper yeah. headbutting each other and all that. And then um and then he, then he ended up knocking Lenny out. And they and he dragged Lenny out of the ring. Cliff Fields pulled Lenny out of the ring. Did he? Yeah. Out. And it was a, it was in a it was in a newspaper, in London, one of the London newspapers the following day. They took a picture of it, but you the picture's gone. Bill can't yeah. find it. I think though you, you you see it, don't you? I mean, like Lenny McLean, I've always said I never met him myself, but you know, when he was younger, like all of us, he was what he's six three and he so he was about what fifteen stone was he in his prime? Yeah, he was fifteen stone at the start. And he was fighting at what maybe 22, 21, in the end, 22 yeah. Yeah. in the end when he was sort of in his late 30s, uh, mid 30s yeah. to late 30s. But that's when he was on the juice because I've heard stories about him um, uh, juicing up in the training rooms yeah. and people walking in and him having like a, a needle in his arse and everything. Oh, that was in the book. That's in the book, that's in that's, the book isn't it? Yeah, the Judas Pink yeah. Uh, yeah. book. But, a lot, but everyone says that he was definitely. Juicing. He definitely was. You can tell 100%. Um, um, but yeah, so I was just going to say that professional, what people don't understand is I think sometimes is that, and I was saying this on the John Fury video, John Fury's not my cup of tea, the way he acts and whatnot. Yeah. The amount, the amount of abuse he gets, uh, people saying he's, because he's been knocked out a few times, that he's nothing and this, that and the other. Mate, he's, he was a pro boxer, he, he, you know, at a decent level. You know, yeah. that's, that's way above people on the street. Who were just having a normal row on the street. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, well, Henry Akin, Henry Akinwande went on to fight for the world title, I think. I think yeah. I think that was one of his losses, wasn't it? It's Henry Akinwande. Yeah. He, so, he, he, he not won. like he's fighting mugs. No, he won a version. He, he won, I think it was the IBF. I yeah. Think, Henry Akinwande. He, I think he did, didn't he? Then Scott Welch might have fought him. Yeah. So as much as people will laugh in the comments and troll people like that, I mean, any person yeah. gets in the ring, whether it's white collar, anything, do you know what I mean? I've got respect for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, I do, mate. Anyone that gets in, I respect. I, the thing I don't respect is when he's offering people out and then when Joe Egan puts it on him, he's not replied to that. So yeah, Joe, Egan's, Joe Egan's fuming about it. Joe Egan's been putting videos out constantly. I, I don't like that. I don't think... I think the thing is with John Fury, what it is, he's built up such a reputation, like a, a persona, as this, like, gruff, you know, fighting man. Yeah. That he can't afford... To to it's not about winning a loot. He can't afford to get in the ring and for people to see a guy in his late fifties. Yeah. Who after, after the first thirty seconds, they're both going to be like yeah. they're not going to be looking good, are they? Let's put it that way. No, no. Well, unless they train hard for it, you never know. I would if I was going to put myself on the line, I'd train hard. But it's yeah. going to be interesting to see because George Carmen offered out Joe and Joe had the ump and said, oh, "We're I'm meant to be friends with Gypsy um, George," so that to um. Yeah, get hold of them and put them both together to have a chat. Which one's that? The gypsy. gypsy? He was the fella. He was a good professional. Um, was he? And he he put a challenge out to Big Joe. Yeah, the other day, and uh, I posted it thinking Joe knew about it, and he rang me out. He goes, "Matt, I'm not happy about this." <laughs> he goes, "Can you get his number for me?" So I got hold of um, Joe Joe Smith and got his number and exchanged numbers from both, and they, they I think they sorted it out. But they were off misfits were offering Big Joe, he said, five, uh, five million or something for him to fight. Or well, they were going to pay massive amounts of money, but it's gone down now to something like a couple of hundred grand. But even a couple of hundred grand is more than what some of the pros are getting in Britain. Oh, yeah, it's massive money, isn't it? Not more. You think about it. Not more. My yeah. biggest fight, my biggest fight I got pff, eleven grand with sponsorship. And so that's that's it. So you got 11k. What was that? Which one was that for? That was a Joshua fight. So anyone offered me 100 grand, I would snap it up. I'd fight anyone for 100 grand. So 11 <laughs> 11k. What year was that again? That was it was. That was 2014. 2014. So so yeah, it's roughly about what it is now, isn't it? Really, it's about the same. About the same. But when I turned pro, I was on better money. When I turned pro, in 2001. Uh, I'm just going to do a few questions, um, Ben. Yeah. Because someone's asked me about the water fast. Um. It's going really well, thank you. The Wandering Albatross. So I've done four days now, just water, um, green tea, no, sorry, herbal tea, and Himalayan salt and um, electrolytes. So four days at midnight with no food, and I'm not. I feel really good, no hunger, uh, motivated. My my YouTube videos, I'm smashing them. Where it would normally take me two or three days, I'm doing them in a day. 
Um, I'm just smashing it straight out. My concentration is there. Com compared to how I was for the last three weeks, it's the total opposite. I've literally come out of uh, of the opposite phase. And now I'm just energised and focused and, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Enjoying the videos that I've been doing and the lives we're going to have and like this one. So it's just I'm back on it. But um, I, I could eat tonight at midnight. And all I'm going to do is have bone broth, one egg and half an avocado. That's it. Because when you've had a four-day fast, you've got to really ease your way back into eating. Uh, but I recommend it, though, to anyone because it kills all your dead cells. Um, you've got to check with a doctor first, but it kills all your dead cells. And it rejuvenates all your – it just cleans out your body. It's like a MOT for yourself. Really does – your eyesight gets better, everything. Brain function. Um, thank you for that. SJ London, um, how did I you manage that? Michael Francis is major. Well done. Yeah, I got a phone call yesterday, SJ, and um, they said, would you be interested in doing an interview with Michael Francis? And I was like, 100%. And they, we arranged it for – it was meant to be yesterday or today. I said, can we do it a bit later on in the week? And they said, yeah. So it's tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Um, yeah, so tune into that, everyone, Michael Francis, tomorrow. It's going blink. to be a good – Blink. Oh, Blink. So blink. blink. Top man, Blink. Yeah, 100%. Well, blink on here, is he? Where's he's Blink? It's on, on the comments. And Bulldog TV, thanks, mate. Blink, respect. I spoke to Blink brother. earlier, actually. <laughs> Absolute legend. Yeah, I missed a call from him. I called him back, but um, we did text each other this morning. I said he's welcome to jump on. Uh, yeah, Blink, I hope you're well, mate. Thank you for the call earlier. Yeah, Zulu, um, 2.0, your channel is good. I like the Joe Egan one as well. Yes, Matt Leg, one of the best on it. Never get involved in the dark side. Thank you, mate. Yeah, I, I nearly did get involved in that last year, ever only briefly, and um, it weren't. No, it's not my sort of thing I want to do. So I just, I just got straight away from it because I'm not the sort of person to argue back and forth on YouTube. No. I'm the sort of person that will go do it behind the scenes, old, the old school way. You settle it with each other away from the public, really. We, so that's what that's why I get kept away from all that last year. We, we always said, didn't we? We said, look. Just keeping a straight path. Yeah. You know, don't get involved in all that side. If someone's yeah. that that disrespectful, sort it out on the outside. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah. And there's a lot of that goes. I mean, I know people get money from it because it gets views and stuff. But I personally, it would it would stress me out too much. Yeah. I'd rather I like to get things. If there's problem there, get it done and dusted straight away. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, nowadays I don't get in trouble. So uh, you got a question here, mate? Um, I oh, know someone's put Ben. <laughs> uh, Mank Man, how you doing? Um, who do I reckon at Haney and Garcia? Haney will come. Yeah, I'll probably agree with you, mate, on that one. Yeah. Yeah. He's my favourite fighter. Who, who um, Haney? Devin Haney, yeah. He's so Is he really? Yeah, really, really good. I've missed out on a lot of the boxing. I normally just follow the heavyweights at the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, Martin's got a good point there. Hit the like button, please, everyone. Appreciate that. Nice one. Who's your favourite heavyweight then, Ben? Well, it was Fury. Um, I still <laughs> I still, I still, rate him highly as a fighter. I sort of really? I like Josh. I like Joshua. I'll tell you what I did like. I liked uh, Big Bang Zhang. Yeah. And um, I, I, was, I was on the hype train there, but I know his last fight... Against uh, uh, Parker, who's got a bit, he's sort of on a comeback. Yeah, he, he looks so like he looked like he'd aged about ten years overnight. So yeah, no way he trained proper for that. Yeah, fight. well, he is in his. I think he's early forties. I think you know what the Chinese are like. They they they, they smudge their ages on the box rack. I think there's no way yeah. he's or he's. How old is he supposed to be? Forty is he? Something like that, forty or forty one. Maybe he's not, five, he's not five years younger than mate. He looks about sixty. <laughs> yeah, I do rate him though. When he's the way he dealt with Joe Joyce was, really? I never expected that. No one expected yeah. that. That was yeah. the, Joe Joyce's chin's been tested by a lot of people, so he must have some serious power. AJ beat him twice in the amateurs. Do you know that? Yeah, did he? AJ yeah. beat Zhang, I think, twice in the amateurs. Wasn't that one? Wasn't one of them close? Was that in the Olympics? Was it one of them? I think he floored him. I think he floored Zhang. Oh, he dropped him. Yeah. I'm sure I see him drop him. I, I might be wrong. If someone knows, 
I'm going to give a shout here to Sean Newton because Sean Newton's put, Matt, you have the same birthday of my new grandson born four hours ago. Wow. Congratulations, Sean. Give him, give him my love. And also Blink's nephew, Matthew, is his birthday today as well. So Blink's nephew, he's only one, but shout out to Blink's nephew. First birthday, same birthday as me. Big up to Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I spoke to Blink earlier, but um, we're going to do a live with me and Blink, and you can come on as well, Ben, at another date. Brilliant. I'll get Norman back on as well at one point. Um, have a good day, mate. Norman Parker's a geezer. That's from LG. He, he's passed on, he now, Norman. Oh, is he? I didn't know. Uh, don't don't take my word for that. I didn't know uh, that. I'll have to ask um, Norman's brother, because he was good friends with him. I think maybe, maybe it's not. I saw it on Google. Maybe I got that wrong. Yeah. I'll find out, mate. No, no, I think he's still alive. Uh, is he? Yeah, um, Squatch. Two of my favourite channels. Squatch. Yes, two of my favourite channels have combined to form a super channel live <laughs> chat. So, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think I asked you last time if you like Bigfoot and that, because your name's Squatch. I was curious about that, because I've studied that, believe it or not. <laughs> I've studied some mad things. Uh, happy birthday. Enough. Yeah, his, his name's Squatch, Sasquatch. So I wonder whether he studies into, he's into Bigfoot and that. Yeah. That's a name for Bigfoot, isn't it? Um, Neil66, thank you, mate. Which boxer from the Ali Foreman era would you like to fight? I would have liked to have fought um, Foreman, probably. I, I really would. But I know he's, the most, he's a very hard puncher and he's tough as anything, but probably Foreman... Ali would have been too frustrating because you wouldn't get near him. Um, Foreman, you would have a proper tear up. Once someone's, so you're, you're probably going to get knocked out with Foreman because you're so strong. But probably Foreman. When I used to train, when I turned pro, I always wanted to fight Mike Tyson. I just had that that urge to fight the the legend that is Mike Tyson. Um, Julius Francis did when I was sparring Julius. He got to fight him and Danny Williams yeah. fought him and beat him. But yeah, who would you? Who, who's your favourite one from them, them eras, Ben? Oh, I I love Ali, obviously because of everything. Ali, yeah. But um, I liked Fraser. Yeah. Um, I like I love Foreman as well. That was brilliant. The Rumbling Jungle uh, documentary. Yeah, um, yeah that was amazing. Wasn't it? Do you remember that fight that uh, Foreman had when he came back years later? Yeah. And he fought for the title against Mora. Mora. And he was getting lit up. His face was done in. And then yeah. he, just, he just caught him with a straight right and knocked him spark out. Spark out. It didn't even look like he put any effort into it. He just... No. Legendary. Brilliant. I liked him better when he came back, when he was older. I just loved the way he was so relaxed. Yeah. Knocking people out, left, right and centre. Um, <laughs> DMD, who promoted me. Uh, my first promoter was Frank Warren. And no my way. manager... Yeah, my, yeah. When I turned pro, it was Frank Warren was my promoter. And Frank Maloney was my manager. Legends. <laughs> Before he was... And we had Lennox Lewis as well at the same time. So he had me, Lewis, I think he had Mark Potter, um, loads of us in the same stable. Rest but, in um, peace, but, Mark. Yeah, rest in peace, Mark Potter. Lovely bloke. Lovely fellow. Good fighter. Very good fighter, Mark. Um, Katie, how you doing, Katie? <laughs> That's my missus. She's upstairs. Um, Michael Parkinson, how you doing, mate? Thank you, mate. Uh, how's Kevin Lane getting on? Yeah, I was going to tell everyone how Kevin's doing. He called me two days ago and he didn't get moved in the end. They brought him back to his cell, but they got him ready to go. I don't know whether they were messing with his head. Got him down and then took him back up. So he's still in the same prison. And they, they, they had a moan at him about doing the lives. Someone complained. So they've he's got to now do a little uh, request form, fill in some stuff and give him a little package of what he's going to talk about this that and the other um I, I, he wants me to get on a, i've got on a dodge woodall because dodge woodall might be doing a zoom chat with him soon so watch out on dodge's channel for possible zoom with kev i was meant to do it but i wasn't feeling well the last couple of weeks zoom that, zoom chat you right sorry mate i was just to say was that what it was about then they, they got the ump with him because he'd done a live with you no, he reckons. I think someone will come in and complained right. because they they knew about it. He spoke to the um, probation service. They knew about the lives, and they said what you can and can't say. So, yeah, we weren't doing anything wrong. We double checked it. 
<laughs> um, Roy Shaw, I've got a question here, Ben. Oh, did Roy Shaw drop Lenny in one scrap? Yeah, no, he was... he, first when he got him on the ropes and yeah. um, Lenny got tired and just let he, My mate was there. My mate said Lenny just put his arms down and just didn't do anything for some reason. And Roy just laid into him and Lenny just stood there. Apparently he never Roy, did. Yeah, apparently Roy really was like, that was the holy grail for him, wasn't it? He wanted to find yeah. the footage of that video and could never, never could find it. Strange that the one fight, well, not the one fight, because there's a lot of fights Lenny lost, but there's no footage of them. He's got Frank Warren, Frank Warren written all over it. That is, <laughs> <laughs> he lost. I mean, Lenny lost to Cliff Fields twice, Johnny Rawdon twice, twice, Kevin Paddock once, and Roy. He lost six out of 12, I think, and then a license. But obviously, on the street, he was legendary on the street on the cobbles. But it's strange there's no footage of them, but. I mean, if you're going to lose a fight, why hide it, though? Because everyone knows about it. Apparently, Roy Shaw was... I've got friends who um, who know... Who, who trained him and knew him yeah. uh, uh, well in London. Um, Johnny Sabini used to train yeah. him. And my, and my good friend, Tal, and um, used to spar him and stuff. But they say that when he before he went in jail, when he was like sort of a slim, handsome kid, do you know what I mean? He was a right handful. Everyone was terif terrified of him. <laughs> yeah, he was, wasn't he? He's, he's, yeah, he's only five foot eight, but he's a handful. He's like a little pit bull terrier. Yeah. He was a middleweight, really, so he shouldn't have been up against the heavyweights. But I, I used to get on with really well with Roy. He came to two of my fights. Um, my mate picked him up, and I dropped him off, actually. Um, I dropped him off back at his house. But he came, yeah, two of my fights. I've got a, vid I've got a video of me and him in the dressing room, and yeah. Really, really sound fella. I've always liked him. Very polite, um, quiet. When I saw him, I know he could be rowdy sometimes, but you see that guy who said uh, Benjamin is it uh, about the miners? He said no, I missed said, that. Oh, just above there. That. Yeah, I, it just made me think because um, Terry was saying to me that uh, people don't know this actually, but there was a fight in years ago in um, a bar in London in one of the Arif's bar. And it was Terry, his family, um, Ray Batson, who did the uh, dome robbery. Um, quite a few people were there. And they had a mad row with, these, with South London lot in the Arif bar. But what, what no one knew, and which I found out, was Jimmy Moody was there. Really? With, with, with Terry and them. And, but he said, that's what made me think of it, he said he was built like a miner. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like just proper, yeah, strong Johnny you know I May. I know he did a lot of training, yeah. but he said he was just built stocky as well. Johnny you know I May, and like you Jimmy know. Moody was a handful, wasn't he? Apparently, in, in, in both ways, not only on the for the fits with everything else, yeah, yeah, everything dangerous, else, mate. Yeah, very yeah. dangerous. Yeah, and he went um, through so many so many generations, didn't he? As well, yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. Your channel, you've got that much knowledge about that side of stuff and you've got contacts as well. You actually know some of the people, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know a lot of them. So that's why, like, your channel's booming. So I recommend anyone that doesn't know The Inquirer, jump on his channel, have a look at his content. Really, really doing well, mate, aren't you? And how many videos are you putting out a week now? About three? Yeah, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and... I'm probably going to try and just put two smaller ones out and then do one a week... Um, on a Sunday, maybe, which is like a half hour one, because I've, I've got yeah. ones that I don't want to waste in such a short period of time. Yeah. That, that I've been working on in the background, which are really interesting ones I've done a load of research for and stuff. Yeah. I think I've got to where you are now. I've got that that concentration and motivation back, which yeah, I lost. I love, I love that. I love the last two you've done as well. Thank Pat, you, mate. Yeah. Uh, Roach is, was one of my favorite guys, and they'll feed the same pet, and the wrestling, yeah. British wrestling, and everything else. Yeah. Um, Pat Roach was a legend, such a nice bloke. I got emotional doing that video, realizing yeah. how nice he was and all that. And um, I put all the sad music on because I, I like to, whatever I'm feeling, I'll put it into the video. So, yeah, if I'm feeling that, I'll put that in. I'll try and get that emotion across. But oh, I just, whatever I'm feeling, yeah, it goes across. And he was a proper, proper good actor, a very good actor as well. Intimidating bloke on screen, but a lovely bloke off screen. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, I'm pleased that I'm back doing it, mate, and I'm pleased that I've got that focus and the videos are kept flowing now, and I, I'm looking forward to doing them now. I wake up, I've been waking up at f uh, five o'clock in the morning 
and getting straight to work at six o'clock, half six, getting on my phone, researching, writing it down. Um, just totally different to the last three weeks. So thank you, mate, for, for um, keeping checking on me, mate, as well. You was you and yeah. Kev were. Yeah, but you, a few of my friends. Thank you to all my friends at work, by the way. I mean, you've got a real talent for it. You, you present it so well. Your video editing's really so good. Everything, the way you do yours, I mean, you, the numbers you've done on some of your videos as well are just mind-blowing. Mind <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I, I can't believe it. When when they started hitting in the six, seven, eights, it's crazy. I never expected that. But what what it is, we, me and you have both done the same thing. We have, we've, we've learned and we've adapted and we've moved on, we've improved. We don't sit doing the same thing at the beginning. We've we've improved so much. You look at our old videos compared to yeah. what we're doing now. I, I, they're just chalk and cheese. My old videos is basically me with with a phone, with a couple of photographs popped up. That's it. But your backgrounds have always been legendary. The what? The backgrounds? The oh backgrounds. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The re the reason I did that is because I didn't think me sitting in a room would be. Would, would keep people's attention enough so i did it outside so there's something to look at in the background but it just worked but i think we're pretty positive people like we we sort of enjoy the process yeah um we're not really into all the wannabe fame sort of no. thing it's more about the actual people we're writing about yeah do you know what i mean it's sort of yeah we don't do it for ourselves i'm happy to, i'm much happier talking about other people much happier because I'll tell you, I've been offered quite a few podcasts lately and I've, and I've I've sort of put them off. I will do them, but I've been putting them off, putting them off. Some big ones as well. And I've just sort of said, give me a bit of time. I think what it is, I don't like talking about the crime and that's what they want. They keep saying to me, like Lad Bible said, we really want the juicy stuff that you can talk about. And I was like, I'm uncomfortable talking about it, some of it, because I don't want to convey it like I, I, I don't know, I just don't want to portray it as positive in a positive way. I won't. I won't ever do it, but I'm not proud of it as well, some of the stuff. So, but I don't want to miss out on opportunities like Lad Bible, but uh, I just said to him, I'm not ready to do it yet. Can I just, can I just answer someone in the comments, mate? Um, yeah, yeah, where is it, mate? Uh, David Melia, it says, in inquire, stop liking people's comments when they're disrespecting people, especially people who you've done videos about. Doesn't what? look good. It, no, what he's saying is that I shouldn't be liking things when people have said something disrespectful. I just wanted to answer it. Um, the truth of the matter is, I don't always look, read all the comments because I just haven't got the time. So I do try and read as many as I can, but sometimes I'll just be pressing the like, not really, do you know what I mean? So I might miss one. Yeah. But as a rule, if I do see anyone being disrespectful by anyone I've done a video about, because I always keep it yeah. respectful, I never judge anyone, I'm always straight down the middle, I would delete them or... Do you know what I mean? Or, or I wouldn't yeah. like them. It's just not done on purpose. It's just probably I've missed it and just been pressing down. Yeah. I do um, try and read. Yeah. Well, I won't accept any any uh, insults to any of the people on my channel. Um, I, I take off. I don't get a lot of rude comments now, to be honest. But I'll just it, it breeds other negativity, and you get more people jumping on. I just don't like it, and it makes me. You can fester on it when you see someone giving it a little bit. So you're best off to get rid of them and don't think about them again. Yeah, um, I was going to, yeah, because especially if they've insulted someone I'm talking about who's a guest or something, I'll definitely take it off. Um, yeah. Just got a quick question here, Ben. Yeah. What are our thoughts on Mike Tyson, Jake Paul? Cheers, Bulldog. Um, I've, I don't know, if the rules are 16 ounce gloves and um, Tyson could still knock him out, but Jake Paul's quite strong as well. Tyson's nearly 60. Um, it's really strange. Is Tyson too old and is his back injured? If that's the case, he'll probably be in trouble. And I, mm -hmm. that that would be my worst nightmare to see someone like Jake Paul beating Mike Tyson would devastate me, let alone yeah. Tyson probably wouldn't care. If you think about it, right, Mike Tyson was felt like he was past it when he got beat by Kevin McBride. That was back in 2001, I think, 100%. 23 years ago. So this is 23 years later. I, 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 I'm, I am a little bit worried, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Um, I think it's never good. You know, how old's Jake Paul? 25, is he? Yeah, um, 27. Albeit he's a novice, he's, you know, he's half decent. He's a, what, is he, what's he fighting? A light heavy, is it? Um, yeah. He's fighting a light heavy. I think that Tyson's, what, 60, is he now? 
uh, or early 60s? 50, yeah, 58. He, I, I would say... The time He's 10 years if, older than me, yeah. Unless it, it may have been... It might be fixed or whatever, I don't know. But if it's not fixed and it's straight, Tyson's probably got two minutes max, do you know what I mean, just to get him yeah. out there. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if Tyson <laughs> still got the power he, he, and lands, he will take him out. And he has got the yeah. speed, but it's whether he can connect. Has he got the reflexes? Uh, my mate Greg, happy birthday, my son. Thank you, mate. How you doing, Greg? I watch your channel sometimes, actually. Oh, yeah, you watch Greg's yeah. channel, don't you? You know, Greg. Yeah. Um, now, who was the hardest to, who was the hardest to hit opponent I ever fought? The hardest to hit was um, was a, a Tyson Fury inspiring and and Sam Sexton. He was hard to hit. Um, I always rated him, you know. Sam Sexton was good, mate. He, he really fucking I couldn't land anything. He was too. I wasn't in shape, but he was good. Yeah. Um, I've got Blink. Is Blink's message? If you're still there, Blink. Thank you, mate. Happy birthday, Matt. You're one of the most genuine and positive person on YouTube. Also, Ben. Sorry, couldn't come on tonight. It's my son first. Oh, it's his son's first birthday. It's called Matthew. Oh, yeah. I thought he was his nephew. Thanks, Blink. Have a good night, Blink. I'll give, you a, I'll give you a ring later in the week. Yeah. Good man, Blink. Um, he's got an amazing story. I can't wait to get him on. He, he's been, he was um, contracts on him, didn't he? Carl got blown up. Oh, he's got the best story ever. I love Blink's story. <laughs> yeah. He has. He's got a good channel as well, everyone. If, if you haven't been on Blink's channel and you like true crime, click on that and subscribe to Blink's channel. He's got some great stuff. Um, <laughs> I think he was in with Kevin Lane as well at one point. Yeah, I think he was. And was he in with Peter Fury? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, getting well with Blink. Thank you, Stevie. It's you're ahead of me on the mess. You're, you're ahead of me, mate, on the mess, isn't you? I Thank you, Jay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what. I, there's a question here, mate, about out of all the Harbin and legends, Bartley, Lenny, Norman, etc. Who intrigues you most, and who do you think was the oldest? That's a good. I was going to sort of talk about that. Is that to you or to or both of us? Both of us, I think. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> It's a it's a it's a good one, isn't it? Because this is what we do, sort of thing. Um, it's it's a difficult one because some of them, when you haven't seen the footage, you're only going on what yeah. people have seen when you're there. But um, for for Bartley, for instance, in the traveller world, because there's a conflict between Irish and English travellers of you know sometimes of who the hardest is and whatnot. Yeah, you get some saying he wasn't all that and. But I know because he, he came to Stoke on Trent a lot and he was up the road, really. Um, yeah. And he was a hard, a hot, serious, hard man. And when you watch him on the bag and stuff, he, he's just solid. He's yeah. just, you can feel the weight of his shots. Do you know what I mean? He's, yeah. he's, he's a, so I really rate Bartley. Um, Lenny McLean, of course, the king of the dorm in, in London. Um, apparently unbeaten on the cobbles I think Lenny and I'll, I'll just be honest I've always said this I think against someone like Matt and it's not me breaking Matt Ox or mates of him whatever but like a, a professional boxer who can also have it on the street and has fought in, on the street all his life I think he will, he'll run into problems because once he blows him, his, himself out and you haven't and you, you've not you haven't fallen down to the fear factor mm. he, he, he may be in in a bit of trouble there. That's what I'd say about mm. Lenny, big Norman Butland. I don't, I haven't seen him in his prime, but he's clearly he's so, such a tough geezer. Um, so he'd be up there as well. But um, who would I? It's so, what do you think? So, what do you think of Lee Duffy? Uh, Lee Duffy. Got to say one thing. Most people have never seen him fight, but they always go on about he would be everyone else, but they've never seen him fight. So it's only word of mouth. Yeah, at the same thing, mate. It's word of mouth. And I've heard from quite a few people that he there's a couple of people who he 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 caught and hit on the sly who yeah. didn't go who didn't go. Yeah. Home. I've and heard he, that. And he sort of bottled it a little bit and got mates with them. Um yeah. obviously Brian Cockroy had that one with him. Then there was another yeah. doorman. Um so it's hard to tell in it with him. He's he was clearly very fast and whatnot. But like you say, no one's people, invincible. No one's no, invincible. I mean, I know people. I've got mates in Stoke who, like, they'd be up there with the best of them. 
and no one knows. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, it just depends on, um, I guess it just depends on the day as well. There's all sorts of variables, but there's some real yeah. heavy people behind the scenes in criminal life and fighting wise who I can't mention on my channel sometimes because, you know, yeah. I've, been, I've been asked not to or whatever, who would be right up there as well. Yeah. Uh, um, so my thoughts are Norman was his ability, his ability to take pain is what made him dangerous and his, and his absolute fearlessness. He would never give up. He would never back down and um, he would fight anyone and he was just tough as anything. He's fought on with his broken jaw. He's fought on with a broken arm. He beat four blokes with a broken arm. Norman did. He had to bite them and stuff. Um, he, I've known loads of people to take him on. I, I've got, I've got two separate gangs of friends. Well, like friends that are hanging a little team. Both of them took him on, and he went through both of both lots. One was a carload of four, and they jumped out with weapons, and Norman went through them all knives and bats and he just I dealt with them the other one was a two car loads i think and they get they see us gassed him in the face and he just went straight through it he yeah. <laughs> he's a different level <laughs> but um he wasn't as big as lenny and as powerful puncher as lenny but i think his toughness was um yeah up there with anyone norman bartley gorman the same i'm friends with the gorman family um jerry sam who are um uh, Bartley's brothers, Sam's sons. I'm friends with them. I'm meant to be doing an interview with them, but I've not got around to going up there. Um, I think Bartley Gorman was definitely one of the best. Who else is on that list, Ben? I didn't Gary, see it yet. Uh, no, not on that list, but we've got a touch on the Liverpool lads. Oh, Gary yeah, Spires. yeah. Gary Spires. <laughs> from, from, uh, yeah, go on. From New Zealand, money originally, but I mean, crikey, yeah. he's a legend, mate. Legend. Yeah. That was your video as well that brought him to my attention. <laughs> what was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was your video. I'm going to try and get hold of Jamie. I've been thinking about this. I'm going to try and get hold of Jamie McLean. So I know Jamie. I know Kelly. I've got Kelly's number, but I'll try and get hold of Jamie because I want to ask Jamie, is there any stories he can tell me about Gary and Lenny doing the jobs together? Yeah, yeah. That is what would make a good video, wouldn't it? Mate, that's the holy grail, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna, I might even get Jamie on for live if if he'll come on for live. Um, but I'd love to know if anyone knows about Gary Spears and Spires and Lenny McLean doing the debt jobs together and doing certain work. That's I, what I'm into. I, I was told a couple of stories about him on deck collecting jobs, right? With um, Lenny, or? not not with Lenny though. No. I've had loads of stories through about him, but I've been yeah. told. It was a kick. There's a kickboxer, a world champion kickboxer. Whether that's Alfie Lewis, who I just done a video on the animal, yeah. Alfie Lewis. He didn't say the name, so I don't know if it's him or, or someone else. Had has got his novel, his three quarter finished novel. Yeah, Gary Spires, who was writing it before before he sadly passed away. And that would, if if the person had that, would wanted to do something with that. That would just be fantastic. Do you know what yeah. I mean? There's so many stories that we, we won't, we'll never probably hear. The thing with Gary, Gary Spires was he was big, strong, skilled in so many different disciplines, eight or nine different disciplines. He was good at wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu. He was doing um, karate. He was the realistic self-defense stuff with the eye gouging, the biting, the elbows, the knees, the head, everything. Anything. He was an expert on it. it but it, it was that era... Because my old man, he was black pal, third down or whatever it was at karate, right? And yeah. it wasn't wasn't for me. I preferred boxing, but he he was he was traditionalist, and they didn't yeah. like the the type Gary Spires and all those types because they didn't they didn't dislike them, but because they did the more realistic stuff. So they 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 morphed that karate and the different martial yeah. arts into a street style. It was a gojo roo though, so, yeah. Yeah, which worked on the door in in real life situations, and to finish it quick, no messing about yeah. it. The the eyes, the neck, anything that you know went. Yeah, yeah, brutal. So he used to have a long fingernails, didn't he? To to put if he needs to put them in someone's eye. Sharp um, fingernails. Sharp and sharp, and that's it. Got a question here for me and you, Ben, from the real sweet T seventy two. Who do you think is the best up and coming middleweight 
and he wouldn't mind your opinion. Um, I'm not too sure at the moment. I've not been following a lot of the middleweights. Who do you think, Ben? Is that in in Britain or um... probably do both? Because in Britain, our a mate of mine, um, one of our lads, Nathan Heaney, yeah, won won the British title. Um, I think that was middle, or was it super middle? I think it was middle. Um, I should know really, shouldn't I? But um, he is a perfect example. If any of you go and have a look at Nathan Heaney, he's he drew his last fight, but he's kept hold of his the belt. Um, of someone who is maybe not super talented, but his fitness, his training, his dedication, and I just love, I love the the British championship fights, and even yeah, areas, yeah. even the area area title yeah. fights, they yeah. get real good scraps. Yeah, um, but I'm not really. I don't know. I'm the middleweights. It's sort of a you got Laura, aren't you? Um, I don't know really. You got is Eubank Junior. He's gone up to super middleweight, has he? Yeah. Uh, Felix Cash. I'm starting to look down the ring thing now. I I don't really know much about the middleweights to be honest. With no me. heavyweights. I'm, I'm normally up on even heavyweights. I'm losing a bit of touch with. It used to um, be the best the best division, didn't it? When Nigel Ben yeah. was around everyone. Nigel Ben, Steve Collins, uh, Michael Watson, and Eubank, wasn't it? You had the four. Yeah. Like you had the American four, didn't you? Hagler, Hearn, Duran, and Leonard. And then you had the British lot. Um, someone's put uh, Rich T. Who would <laughs> who would win a straightener between Shane Fury and Dean White? <laughs> I, can, I, I can I can tell you that now. Go on. And, that's, and no offense to Shane, I would <laughs> I, 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 I would put Dean White. Dean White. If you haven't, there's a video on my channel. And I'm not trying to just promote it. It's all about Dean White's background. That's not his real name. It's a good video, yeah. And he isn't the brother of... Um, uh, Dillian. Dillian. They're, they're sort of just good pals. But he's he was a proper serious youth, the Dean White was, yeah. on the streets. Yeah. And uh, I met him. I met him in Vegas at the um, Wilder uh, Fury 2. And when I say he's big, I'm six foot three nearly six four about six three and a half probably yeah in between and i'm 20 stone and mate he was massive like he must be six five mm. and about 23 24 stone easy like but muscle when i saw yeah him. he's a big big old unit uh, do you remember when you put that video up i said no no it's going to do well because you didn't yeah. think it would be <laughs> yeah yeah it did well. remember you said you said to me that ain't going to do well when 100 percent, that's going to do well because it started off slow because it was a Friday, yeah. Friday, and it picked up. That's what happened with my latest ones. That and um, Billy Whitehurst, when I did, I thought it got three or four thousand in one day, and I thought that's because normally it's more than that for, for us. I thought that's not going to do well then. And then but suddenly, two days later, it just went up. That's a quality one though, because once people it gets out there to the to the fan base as well of the different clubs and whatnot, and people start sharing it around, I think. Yeah, that's just that'll just keep building. Hopefully, yeah, I'm pleased with it. It's just nice to be doing them. Thank you, Dread. Yeah, thank you, Real Wells. Hope you're well. <laughs> thank you, mate. Thank you for thank you for the birthday messages. By the way, I really appreciate that. I keep forgetting it's my birthday. Even yesterday, <laughs> I just keep forgetting because I don't normally. When you get older, you're not big on birthdays, do you? you know what I mean? Once you get a certain age. But did I tell um, you that, Matt, that, I, that I, I found a year? You found a what? I found a year. I told you. I'm sure I told you. Um, oh, yeah. You look, you gained a year. You... I, yeah, I gained, <laughs> I, I gained a year. I thought I was 46. Yeah. I'd, and your mum? <laughs> your mum? Yeah. yeah, my mum said, my said uh, I said, I was speaking to her mum, and, and she said, oh, I can't remember what was said anyway. I said, no, what are you on about? And she said, no, no, you're 40. No, she didn't know, though. My own, own mum didn't know how old I was. And then she then yeah. I can't remember. I, yeah. I put a thing on a software thing, and it said me, It said I was 45. <laughs> yeah. You've gained, so, you gained a year, haven't you, of your life? Yeah, but, mate, that's not good, is it? That I mean, You don't know your own age. That's a misprint. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, it's just a number, really. I've got to answer this one, yeah. Ben, because this is interesting to me. Herbert... I like listening to Sasquatch Chronicles every now and then. I always do, Herbert. I'm always listening to that, constantly. One of my favourite things to listen to, that is. Tony Lee. 
Thank you, mate. Yes, Matt and Ben, I'm late, but better late than never. Loving the content from both as usual. Thank you, mate. Thank you for the support. Uh, Real Wells, he, uh, what about Henry Cooper? Yeah, he was good. Good left hook. Flawed Ali, didn't he? And then they did the little cheat with the, gun, the cut glove. Have you seen the message, Ben? Are you gone quiet? <laughs> Sorry, mate. I was looking at the comments. Oh, um, I thought yeah, you <laughs> Yeah, Henry Cooper left uh, Henry yeah, Hammer. Look. Yeah, Henry Hammer. Oh, Jeff Thompson. Sorry, I keep jumping out of you because you're you're behind. Yeah, I'm miles back. Big Joe Bugner was good, actually, uh, Mank Man. I really like Joe Bugner because he fought Ali twice, Fraser twice. He fought everyone else. I don't think he got knocked out a lot either. I think Frank Bruno stopped him and not many other people. So that's the good. He must have had 70 or 80 fights, Bugner, against all the top pros. And in that era... In the seventies and the eight, early eighties was the best, probably the best era for heavyweights we've ever seen. Didn't he fight Big Frank Bruno later on? He fought Bruno right? and he got knocked out. Yeah. yeah. Have you done a video um, on Frank Bruno yet, uh, Matt? Um, no. He's in the oh, Gary Mason video that I did. That I love that Mason video. Yeah, thank you, mate. He's in that one. He's That's true. The, the Foreman versus Lyle was one of the best fights ever. Foreman got decked in that, yeah. And Foreman doesn't normally get decked. And then he floored Lyle. Then he got up and decked him. That was an amazing fight. A good fight, that Ron Lyle, yeah. Good Ron Lyle. That's it. He was a tough. Uh, he'd been in jail quite a bit. Big, big puncher. Yeah. Here's my old mate Craig Hamilton. We go back to 1984. We've been friends. Cheers, Craig. Hope you're well, mate. Good friend of mine. He's a good boxer, Craig, as well, and a good fighter on the street. He's fought like two, three, four people by himself. He's only a, a light middle. Don't be telling me that, Matt. I need to do a video on him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll try and get. I might get him on if you can come on and do a live with me one day, Craig. If you want, that'd be good. He, 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 he's conf confident in front of the camera. He's been on. He's done acting and stuff like that. He can get on the screen. Um. Hi, Matt. Did I ever meet Michael Bisping? Yeah, I did meet Michael Bisping at the Lenny McLean film premiere because he played Roy Shaw in the film. And I spoke to him in there, yeah. I weren't too, I weren't too impressed with the actual film because I thought they could have done a film about more of Lenny's, more of his life I wanted to see. I didn't like that film, mate. I've got to be no, honest. No, I'll tell you what made up for it, though. Jamie's documentary, The Governor, that, that yeah, made yeah. up for it. That was really good. I enjoyed that. I think um, I was always disappointed when we didn't get to see um, Craig Fairbrass. Yeah. He would have been one of the best. Yeah. I've had a couple of people like um, Jimmy Andrews and a few of people at New Lenny said I should have done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would have been brilliant. Yeah. <clears throat> so I suppose I've got the boxing experience as well. Yeah, definitely. That's true. Nassim, Kev, Kevin Kelly was a good fight. I remember that as well in the 90s. Both got decked quite a few times. Yeah, Kev, Kevin Lane, um, yeah. Well, he thought he was going to get moved and he thought he was going to another jail and it could have been quite a, a headache for him because there was a lot of people in there that he didn't get on with and it could have been big trouble. And then luckily he's not been moved because that would have stressed, I mean, it would have stressed me out. But that, maybe he wouldn't have been stressed. He doesn't tend to worry that much, Kev. Thank you, egregious Banda. I'm good, thank you. Jay, the GoFundMe for Kev is still going. Yeah, I need to share it again. But he's grateful for that because it goes towards his court, his court fees. <laughs> Tony Lee's, but don't be wasting your four days fast with eating 18 pieces of birthday cake. <laughs> I know. It's amazing to think you can, yeah, you don't need to eat. But that's the thing with fasting, isn't it? When you come off it, like you're saying, you're going to do it proper. Yeah. Because if you I'm come off it and then you eat crap, then you just blow up, don't you? Yeah. I'm not going to do it, mate. Some people come off it and eat pizza and all that. And it's just it's a waste of time. Yeah. You put all the weight back on. Um, what do you think of the Wardley and Clark fight? I, I Really good fight. Really good. Entertaining. Surprising, actually. Surprised me. Um, especially Clark surprised me. He was a lot sharper than what I imagined. What do you think, yeah. Ben? Yeah, Clark, uh, that was the best I've seen him. But... I think Wardley, and he showed it with Wardley showed it against um, Nathan Gorm, uh, Nathan um, Gorman. Who, yeah, 
my mate actually is in his training camp, Nathan Gorman. For, uh, my mate yeah. Top, my mate Topo, who's a doorman with us in Stoke back in the day. He um, he was a pro boxer himself. Um, but he just hasn't got, Nathan hasn't got that, what wardy has got. And uh, he hasn't got that, Wardy will just bite down on his gum shield and just proper aggression and go for it. When yeah. He and He's I, like I Nigel Ben, isn't he? Yeah. And I thought Fraser Clark did well, uh, sticking in there when he got knocked down a few times. Yeah. Both showed a lot of bottle. Lot of bottle. Thank you, um, Real Wells. Heavyweights, no joke. When you get hit by them heavyweights as well, it takes it out of you, and it's yeah. different to getting hit by the little, the, the littler ones. But thank you, Peter, for the compliment there. <laughs> this is a good question, <laughs> David Miller. Who is the bloke behind the Inquirer? <laughs> well, he's there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I'm not not anyone special. Uh, just from Stowe. Had a bit of a life um, done, it's not really a secret, but I've done quite a few years in jail when I was younger. Was sort of involved in that underworld life for a long time. And then went straight in my 30s, uh, early 30s, and just running normal businesses. So I've run a media company and um, I've got a, f a few other things I do as mm -hmm. well, a bit of property and different other bits and pieces. And just really... This channel is like I just enjoy doing it. I sort of interest because I'm not involved in that life anymore. I've got some good contacts like Matt has, and we I sort of enjoy doing it in a respectful way. Yeah, not, not like a, other newspapers do it, slagging everyone off. Everyone's got a story and a journey and everything else, but not highlighting it either. If you get me, not promoting it, <clears throat> not promoting it. Yeah, because no, it's just oh, like, that's good. yeah, go on. Sorry, it just always right. ends in you know. Nine times out of ten, it causes misery. I mean, I caused a lot of misery for my family and different people over the years, being away from them. And, and um, you know, it's not... I'd, I'd recommend to anyone, when especially when they're younger, um, getting into learning about business early on and stuff. I wish I had. Yeah. At the age, rather than getting involved in all the, you know, the, the, the other side. 100%, mate. I wish I got myself a trade rather than getting into crime too young and then living, thinking that's the way forward. It's not. And then when you realise in your mid thirties, you've, you've left yourself, like I've got no pension or nothing now because of all that. Yeah. Well, yeah. you've got a pension and, and I imagine you're the same probably, or, or maybe, yeah. no, maybe not, but you've got businesses, didn't you? Yeah, no, but I haven't got pension. Same as you, mate. I've had to really run quick, do you know what I mean? And sort of invest yeah. in things and make yeah. sure. Cause you don't really think about it, do you? Even at our age, like mid to late forties, you know, you still feel, it just creeps up on you because you still feel young, don't you, really? It's like, yeah. You, you always think, yeah, as you get older, it goes quicker. But when you're young, you think, oh, it's miles away. But when you yeah. start getting there, it's quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, Gemma Leddy's just subbed to you, Ben. She's one of my um, loyal subs. Oh, thanks, Gemma. Gemma. Much appreciated. She's just watched the North East Governor one before this. That was one of yours. Oh, that was good. That was about Eddie Elwood, wasn't it? Oh, mate, he's a proper geezer. Uh, he, he's the type of person who I like, you know, yeah. not not a bully. You know, when you're talking about um, Gary Spire's finger nails, I didn't mention it in the video, I don't think, but he he sharpened his nails as well and kept them long because he, he got oh, attacked. Really? Yeah, he got attacked by about, I didn't go into it in too much detail on this one, um, but he, he went, he got attacked by about 15 geezers with weapons and he got one of them around the neck and he, he ripped chunks of flesh out of his, out of his neck. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> yeah. But he's he not, must have um, been a force. I mean, Richie Horsley uh, spoke to Richie today, actually, and he wished me happy birthday. And he he's the first one that told me that Eddie, Eddie Elwood... So I knew Eddie Elwood from years ago, from bodybuilding and, and I did, strength. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, didn't, I didn't know him personally, but I knew of him. But um, Richie Horsley told me all the stories, and he said... Because I was going to do a video last year, I never got around to it. It was going to be all the North. It was going to be Eddie Elwood... Uh, Ernie Buick, um, the one I did, I forgot his name now, but Ronnie, oh, I forgot his name, but he fought Ernie Buick's Col wife. Coleman. Uh, no, Ronnie, I can't remember his name, but, and I was going to put Richie in it, but Richie's a bit shy, he doesn't really want to do it anymore. He said he's spoken enough, um, but he said about Eddie Elwood, was a, was yeah, very, very good as a boxer. Yeah, it's interesting, because I've, I've chatted to a few great people, mate, who I'd love to get on, or do a video yeah. on. And they enjoy my channel and I chat to them a lot and but they're like, Ben, look, I'm just I'm you know, 
I'm just out of all that now. I don't want it brought back up. Do you know what I mean? Which I understand. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Sasquatch, <laughs> you made me laugh there. Your favourite box is Everett Bigfoot Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him. He was a sparring partner for all the heavyweights. Bruno and that used to spar him. Uh, Jamie Lady's put the views are unreal. I think that's on your channel, Ben, because I've not been on, but your views are amazing, mate. It's good to the effort you put into it. Um, no, mate, the day I get anywhere near the numbers you get on your big videos, I'll be No, no it's, it's going to happen, mate. I think you've already you've overtaken me. <laughs> no. that, I'm, I'm happy for you, though, to take, to take over, mate. <laughs> um, we can both go up together. I think now I've got the, the focus back. Actually, someone just put that. I'm looking and saying in focus. Yeah, thank you. I do feel it. Uh, I've only been getting four hours kip a night as well. So I've been going to sleep at one, getting up at five. And I can't get back to sleep. But I'm feeling energised, even with four hours sleep. I'm feeling energised. I've had no food. Um, in a way, I don't want to end it. I don't want to end it by, by breaking the fast. But you've got to end it at some point. I'll just end it sensibly, but I do feel really, really sharp. Uh, thank you, Mr. England. That's the thing, Ben. We're always respectful on the channels, aren't we? 100%. It's not. Always. And, and even if people have passed away, you always put a tribute or you say to the, about the families. and. Well, well, the people, you know, everyone's got kids and grandchildren. I get so, I know you do as well. Yeah, I get I get so many people who've messaged and said I, I had a guy the other day say um, on the Gary Spires video he said I've just seen a picture of me and my dad and my dad passed away when we were training with uh, Gary Spires he said I was in tears and he's got, got it as his profile picture now so it's things that's like nice. that nice heartwarming mate sure, yeah makes sure. you feel nice I mean don't get me wrong you, you get people who sometimes have got the hunt with you yeah and I. The way I look at it is, as long as they've got a genuine grievance or whatever, or you know, it's something that's upset them. I'm quite happy to take videos down. It's not about the money yeah. or anything like that. I, I've had two people. I've only had of all the people I've done videos about on my little documentary. I've only had two people not happy about it, and one of them I was like, "Well, it's already it's already on the world's media, so what I've <laughs> spoken about is already out there." And the other one, the other one, I did take the video down because it, I thought, yeah, that's fair enough. It wasn't disrespectful. It was because the person didn't want themselves on camera anymore. So I said, okay. But I've never had anyone. In fact, I've had Terry, Terry O'Neill's daughter said, what a lovely video. I've shown it to my dad. I saw that. Um, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. I've had quite a few family members coming on saying that was, that was really nice. It's a nice Cause community. I always, like, we do it respectful. Don't slag anyone off. I don't like I don't like calling people names in real life anyway. Let alone doing it in videos or um, across the computer. Exactly. I was brought up to be respectful to people and polite manners. Um, yeah, not like some of the people you see um, just love to be negative, and that's not the way I, I am. Negativity is draining. I think that bull is fascinating, Matt. Is that oh bull? Run, run rings mount. <laughs> yeah, um, he's coming on. He's coming on for a live. Um, soon, he called me the other week. He wanted to come up. He wanted to come up and do a live with Kevin Lane and Norman and, and me. That'd be yeah. amazing. I'll let you know, mate. You can come up as well because he's proper. He knows all the the boys from Canning Town and that, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, he knows everyone. He knows all that firm. Yeah, he knew Bill the Bomb and he knows all the the, the other lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, please hit the likes, everyone. I forgot to say, hit the like button. That helps with the um. The video and the channel, but it's just good to be back, mate. I'll let you go soon, mate, because I know you've got a lot to do. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, by the way, and all the comments. Yeah, I really thank you so much for the, the kind comments from everyone. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, coming on for Matt on his birthday. Um, yeah, I keep forgetting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, Ben. I appreciate that, mate. Um, Joe Smith's a good man, he is Edward. I'll speak to Joe Smith now and again. Joe, that's another that's a good point. Kushti TV. Uh, head over to Joe's channel. He's a really good channel, Joe's. He should have a lot more subscribers. I think he'll build. He will build it up. We need to get Come you. On. We need to get you and Paul Joyce on, mate. Doing. Did you watch the Joe Smith video where Joe Smith and Rayel they put the best gypsy boxes against the best? Yeah. Non gypsy. 
yeah, uh, or, or travel that. ambition, non, non travel it. You should, yeah, you and, you and Paul Joyce doing that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Paul, well, w Willie Joyce said to me, um, Paul Joyce will only ever do one podcast and he'll only ever do mine, he said. Yeah, he, that's true. He said to me, I was so. like, oh, I go, well, that'd be brilliant if he would. That fight we had, me and Paul, was one of my favorites. Brilliant fight. <laughs> he was unbeaten as well at the time. Um, Tony Lee, what sort of weight have I lost? I lost eight pounds in one day, and I, I don't know what I lost the day before because I didn't weigh myself. I lost four pounds yesterday, and I've lost four pounds this morning. So four, eight, so 16 pounds on the days I weighed myself. I didn't weigh myself the first day. I should have weighed myself at the beginning. Um, but I've lost over a stone, and I feel amazing. Matt, I'm going to get off, mate, because I've got... Um, yeah, no problem, mate. ...do a few things. But listen, I really appreciate you allowing me to come on. Yeah. Thank you, Ben, um, for coming on, mate. I'll catch up with you soon. Yeah, and everyone in the chat, uh, it's been, been lovely uh, meeting you all. all right, yeah, head over to Ben's channel. Thank you, mate. All the best, Ben. Take care, guys. Bye. Cheers, mate. I'll answer a few more comments. <laughs> Sugar Ray Robinson, yeah. Sugar Ray Robinson was was the greatest boxer, wasn't he? I think he had like two or three hundred fights with only a handful of losses. And Cliffy Fields was the hardest man on the cobbles, yeah. I would say so as well. I would say so. Ray Hill agrees with that as well. Benjamin, Malcolm Price got banned. Yeah, Pricey, well, the Valley's got banned. For, yeah, Malcolm Price was good. <laughs> I've done a video on Malcolm Price and Lenny McLean. They were meant to fight. Price was going to fight Lenny. And um, I think my, Malcolm Price might have gone to prison, so it stopped the fight. But that would have been interesting because Malcolm Price was a box pro boxer as well and a very, very tough man. So uh, Jeff Thompson, very, very good. Yeah, experienced, dangerous. Thank you, Paul Lucas. Nice one, mate. Uh, yeah, Dave Garside was a good fighter. Yeah. He beat Brian Cockle, didn't he, in the first fight? Yeah. And, and another pro boxer as well. Thank you, Henry. Good to see you, mate. <laughs> Rackpool. <laughs> I forgot that. Is he still going, is he, Rackpool? I haven't seen much of him. <laughs> uh, Cliff Fields, yeah, definitely a beast on the cobbles. Benjamin Whitehouse would love to do a video on... Len Wickwa might be difficult. Yeah. I've got a video coming up about a boxer called OB. I forgot his surname. OB Bearcat. And he was one of the toughest boxers, probably going back about 80 years. Absolute, like 100 and something fights, never, ever got stopped in the old days as well with the little gloves. I think it was OB Bearcat. Spears was hard as granite, 100%. Yeah, definitely. Gary, Gary Spires, I rate as one of the best of all time. I'll put him against anybody. <laughs> Mank man, big Norman would use CS gas as nasal spray. He would. He would. He's very, very tough, Norm. Um, ben Ashley, do I did I get any side effects? What happened on the second day? I had to do I got my mum got me a bike for my birthday, so I did a 10 mile bike ride with no food. And I was I haven't bike I haven't ridden for about six months so when i got home i was dizzy and the whole night i was a bit my concentration went so i struggled that second day but the third day and, and today i've been on fine all my youtube videos research has been going really my brain seems to be just really a lot of clarification and everything seems sharp and yeah i'm not struggling with like videos taking me a day to do it would have took me two days before sometimes three days and i'm doing it in a, in a day Uh, Dean Cooper. No, I didn't know him. Um, Christy. Oh, uh, Dean. I know what you mean. That was Dean. It was another Dean, wasn't it? Um, it was a middleweight. Dean. Forgot his name, but I do know who you mean. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Spires was one of the top, the top without a doubt. Um, Norman. Yeah, Norman's fine. Thank you, mate. Cheers, Dave. Um, I'm going to see him Saturday. I've got a bare knuckle fight Saturday, so I'm going to go up to see him. 
um, up in Bradford. My one of my people I train, Adam, big Adam. He's having his he's having a European title fight against Sean Wood. So I'm going to be in the corner for the bare knuckle fight in the cage, and I'm confident Adam's going to win the European title. And then um, yeah, and move on to the next fight. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. I really appreciate that on my birthday and that, and I appreciate all the support in general. And um, yeah, be back on here tomorrow with Michael Francis. Yeah, tomorrow Michael Francis at six o'clock. I know it's a little bit early, but yeah, tomorrow will be a good one. So sorry I can't reply to all the messages, but um, thank you everyone, and I'll catch up with you all soon. Nice one. <laughs>